it's quite a wide kind of trunk, isn't it? It's quite like large. It's got all of these like nobbles along the whole thing, and it's quite like crusty. It's really. It's a warm spring day in late March, and Robert Joe and I are walking through the streets near his house, identifying trees using an app called Leaf Snap. Right, let's see. Photo of it. He takes a photo of the bark, the leaves, or the flowers, and the app gives you a few options of what it thinks the tree might be. It could be a common oak, a valonia oak, a scarlet oak, an oriental plain. <laughs> Does it fly? This is his way home every day from school, and ever since the leaves have started to come out, he's been wondering why some trees lose their leaves and some don't. And also, like, how the trees know when it's time to shed their leaves. Welcome to The Conversation's Curious Kids, the podcast where a kid asks a great question and we find a very clever expert to answer it. So, all you curious kids out there, if you have a burning question, please write to us at curiouskids at theconversation.com and we will do our very best to answer it. Right, okay, I'm gonna take a photo of you. Okay. And there. Roby Joe zaps me with the app. What do you think I am? You're a bit of a bark, if you want to be. <laughs> right, let's see, let's see what we have here. <laughs> not any found result. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, not even Leaf Snap can find the answer inside me. So, in this episode, we'll be calling in the help of a botanist, an expert who studies plants. I'm Paul Ashton, I work at Edgel University. I mean, to be honest, I get paid for being outside and that's the best bit. Amazing. Does that sound like a good job, Robes? Would you like yeah, that? Yeah, I think I'd do that. So, Roby Joe, why don't you tell Paul a little bit about yourself? Mm, so, my name is Roby Joe. I'm 10 years old. I love playing sport, especially cricket. I play a lot of cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your question today, Roby Joe? My question is why some trees lose their leaves and some don't. And also, how the trees know when to shed their leaves? Okay, that's two really fine questions. They're related, but they're separate. So if we deal with the question of why some lose their leaves and others keep it, I think it's worth thinking about energy. Energy! We learnt all about that in the last episode with Ella, remember? It's called What is Energy Made Of? And Sam Barron told us all about how eating gives us energy to do so many things, like play cricket. If you're hungry, you have a chip butter, a chip sandwich, whatever you want to call it, and that keeps you on until the next meal. A tree can't do that, so they have to make their own food. And they do that through sunlight and water and some nutrients from the soil, which we know as photosynthesis. And the things that do that, the factories of the tree, are the leaves. Photosynthesis. This is one of the most important processes in all of science. So listen carefully. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a a chemical reaction whereby the plant takes sunlight, it takes water, and it takes some soil nutrients and converts it, first of all, into sugar. And then it takes that sugar and uses it in the way you use your chip butter to grow fight disease, to provide energy for life processes. Yeah, that's cool. (laughs) And in order to do this, plants need something called chlorophyll. Have you heard of chlorophyll? I don't think so, no. So chlorophyll is the pigment that allows them to photosynthesise. Yeah, which like transforms all of that stuff into energy. Yeah, exactly. Chlorophyll is bright green and, as I'm sure you can guess, it's what gives leaves their colour. So now we know that plants need chlorophyll to make food, and this is found in green leaves. Why would some trees lose them? Isn't it a bit like throwing your lunchbox out the window? Not quite. In fact, trees do one of two things. They either put a lot of energy into making a leaf and keeping a leaf, keeping it running, keeping it ticking over, and getting a lot of energy out, or they have a low energy leaf that is very cheap to run, but doesn't give them much energy. Yeah, okay. In other words, 
Imagine I'm a tree and I pay five pounds per leaf. These leaves cost a lot of money every day to keep running, but every day they give me five pounds worth of food back. But if I'm a different kind of tree, I might only pay one pound per leaf. These leaves are cheap to run, but I only get one pound worth of food back a day. See? Now, that's fine in summer. In summer, both leaves can run quite happily. There's plenty of sunlight around, plenty of photosynthesis, plenty of energy, and the tree can build new branches, it can build other leaves, it can repair damaged parts, it can fight disease, whatever it chooses to do. A bit like you with your chip butter. You've got energy to run around, energy to play cricket, energy to get better if you're ill. So it's the same kind of thing. The issue comes then when you move into winter and there's less sunlight around. You know, we, we only have a few hours daylight. And if you're a tree that has put high energy leaves out there, leaves that require a lot of effort to keep them ticking over, then there's not enough daylight to keep them running. And those are the leaves that the tree loses. Oh, because they can't like maintain to keep them anymore. They can't keep themselves, yeah. Whereas the evergreens, they're quite easy to maintain in winter. So even on reduced sunlight, they keep ticking over. Evergreen. Have you heard that word before? Bet you can guess what it means. The clue there is in the name evergreen because it's forever green. It keeps its leaves all year round. And often looks like a Christmas tree. Deciduous, therefore, is the kind of opposite of that. It gets its leaves in spring, it keeps them through summer, it loses them in autumn. Yeah. So in winter, it's bare trees, it's got no leaves on it, no flowers on it, nothing. Sure. But it's still alive. It, to us, it looks like it's doing nothing, but it's worth remembering that a deciduous tree is still alive. Yeah. Okay, that's very cool. <laughs> Um, let's take a photo of this tree here. It's quite like spiky. It looks a bit like a massive Christmas tree. Okay. I think. Okay, use photo. It's called a Monterey Cypress. Amazing. Okay. Every leaf is perfectly designed for whether it stays or falls. Let's start off by looking at an evergreen tree. So if we take the example of the Monterey Cypress, it had lots of needles, did it? Yeah, it had loads of needles. They're really thin. They're quite like swords-like, like the end of a sword. I think that's a great description. If you ever try and clap your hands on them, it hurts because they're spiky little things. Yeah. 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 So don't do it. <laughs> but these needles aren't just prickly to keep us and other insects away. Their sword-like shape ensures they lose as little water as possible. Remember, they need water for photosynthesis. Next time you pass one, have a feel of it. Yeah, okay. And it actually feels quite waxy. Sure. And that wax is there to help prevent it losing water. Okay. Is that because less water can evaporate out of their skins? It is, yeah. In the same way that skin has pores. So if you sweat, the sweat comes through the pores on your skin. Yeah. Leaves also have little tiny pores on them that we call stomata. And those are the roots by which water leaves the leaves. Okay, got it. Your other leaves, which are shed in autumn, which we call deciduous leaves, don't have that waxy layer, and they tend to lose more water. Okay. These needles need to keep as much water as possible, because evergreens often grow in places where water is scarce. Do you know where these places are? It might seem strange, but the closer to the poles you go, the less water is available in winter. And that's because, although it snows a lot there, the ground is very frozen. So the trees can't get hold of it because ice doesn't move through the soil. Oh, and that's not the only problem with ice. Because most of the leaves are made up of water, it's water and other chemicals. If it's freezing, you might get ice in the leaves. Yeah. And if you do that, then it damages the leaves. Okay. You can see this for yourself by doing a cool little experiment. Roby Joe started his earlier. Yeah, so we put this tomato here in a bag and put it in the freezer. And so far, it's like, I see these kind of like 
ice bits which kind of formed around the um, tomato. It's still a little bit frozen. Uh, but yeah. Squeeze here. There's a mushy bit there. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. that. That's Wait for light. it to thaw out. So it's frozen for now, so it keeps its shape while it's frozen. But once it thaws out, it'll go to mush. Yeah, get your best clothes on. What I recommend is get your best clothes yeah, on. Yeah, best white Let clothes. it thaw out and then give it a squeeze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happens is the water in the tomato freezes. Yeah. And it forms ice crystals and then it breaks the cells. And what you get from your tomato is tomato mush. Tomato mush. Now, clearly, if you've got needles or any kind of leaf, you want them to stay as leaves you don't want them to turn to mush over winter. Yeah. So what plants have are a set of proteins called cryoproteins, which is like antifreeze. Hmm. So in the same way that your parents will put antifreeze in the car to stop the engine freezing in winter, plants have antifreeze to stop the leaves freezing in winter so they can carry on working. So we have these incredibly well-designed needles which will last year after year after year. But that's not to say the deciduous trees just throw their leaves away. They're not throwing out their lunch boxes. The question is really what happens to the energy in that leaf, the chemicals in that leaf at the end of the summer. The plant doesn't just let it go. If you think about it, when leaves are shed in autumn, they've changed colour. Hmm. And what's happening when that colour change happens is that the tree is taking in all the energy, all the nutrients, all the chemicals from that leaf. Ah, so that's why they turn like different colours. That brown colour is basically all the rubbish that it doesn't want anymore. It's you throwing away your chip wrappers. I've had my energy, I've done with that meal, I'm going to throw the rubbish away. So that's what's happening in autumn. It's leaving the rubbish in the leaf, it's taking the good bit back into the tree for next spring, and it's casting the leaf off. And this is what gives us autumn's beautiful procession of colours. The red's always there. Most of the time it's hidden by the green. And once the green pigment's broken down and taken into the tree, you're left with the red, and then that's broken down, and you're often left with the yellow, and then that's broken down, and you're left with the brown and all the rubbish that the tree doesn't want anymore. Why do some trees know when it's time to shed their leaves? Good question. You know what a rainbow is? Yeah, I know. And you know that a rainbow has got all the colours of the rainbow in it? Yeah. And you perhaps also know that a rainbow is white light that's been split. Yeah. So your eye can see all the colours of the rainbow. Now, a tree doesn't have eyes, but it can still spot some of the colours of the rainbow. Okay. And it's particularly good at blue and red. What's amazing is the tree can also see some colours that you can't. And in particular, it sees a colour called far red. Far red. So that's beyond the red end a bit of the rainbow colours. And why it's important to the tree is as autumn develops, as the days get shorter, there is less red light and more far red light. Okay. And the tree spots that and thinks, more far red, autumn's coming, winter's coming, I need to lose my leaves and get ready for the winter. That's cool, yeah. Plants are like quite smart, aren't they? <laughs> They're amazing. They're absolutely amazing, yeah. But even as the trees prepare for winter, they're thinking ahead to the next season too. It's not just about losing the leaves in autumn. It's about growing the flowers again, having the buds ready in spring. So as a summer starts to come to an end, the tree stops growing and producing new branches. Instead, it starts to develop buds that will become flowers and leaves next spring. Hmm. So it's about you not just doing your homework for tomorrow, it's about doing your homework for six months' time. <laughs> <laughs> then if I want to do that. Should uh, we do this one now? Yeah. All right. Um, it's got some amazingly pink and white flowers. 
The leaves look quite kind of like um, kind of furry, you know what I mean? It's quite light green leaves and it's also a light brown um, trunk as well. I think it's called a magnolia and this is absolutely magnolia. my favourite flowering tree. That's my mum loves it. Oh, so good, no? She's yeah. got good taste. One thing I find quite beautiful is when it becomes spring again and like all of the uh, buds start sprouting again. And yeah. Because I go past that tree almost every day and it's become quite nice again. How wonderful it is to have a tree that you see every day and it changes through the year and it probably sees you and see that you've changed through the year as well. Yeah. It's one of the great pleasures in life is to have a tree as an old friend. So keep that and look after it. Thank you so much for explaining that to us and thank you for answering Robo Joe's question. That was like absolutely brilliant and thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you both soon. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Curious Kids. If you've got a question for us, please do email us at curiouskids at theconversation.com and we will do our best to answer it. With thanks to Roby Joe, Paul Ashton and Stephen Harris, who executive produced this episode. It was produced, presented and sound designed by me, Eloise. See you next time. <laughs>